welcome to the Cyrano's Place channel where we train like champions, even though we may not have the resources of a champion, but we do have a heart of one. I'm Coach Cass, and today we have a guest coach, Rudy Volkman from Augusta, Georgia, who is going to show us something about the biomechanics of recovering from our lunch. Take it away, Rudy. Hi, I'm Rudy Volkman, and I'm here with another video that I made for my friend Sarah Cass for her use in her website on Cyrano's Place. Today's topic is the recovery from the lunge position. To begin with, it's worth noting that the lunge is there because of the recovery. That is to say that we lunge because we can recover. So why do we lunge anyway? I mean, we could run, we could jump, we could fly. In fact, there is such a move. Why the lunge? Well, the reason is because the lunge is what gives us maximum recovery distance in one tempo. It helps us get out when things go wrong. The correct recovery involves moving both legs at the same time in a coordinated manner. You start in a lunge and then do that. The movement should bring you back and not up. Like in a correct retreat, the front leg moves by lifting the toe and pushing back on the heel like this. While the front leg is doing that, the back leg moves by bending the knee, bringing the body back. It should bend back about to the on guard position. Obviously, there's a little bit more to it than that, and we never really get to this position. But that's the position that we're aiming for when we move our legs. What's actually going to happen is that we're going to develop some inertia with that initial motion and then about halfway through, we push off with the heel to bring us back into the on guard position. This correctly coordinated action should bring us back and slightly up at the end and not up and then back. It should look like this. So this action becomes this action. So what can go wrong? It all seems very simple. Well, for one thing, a really correct and efficient recovery requires a correct lunge position. So if the front knee is too far forward, like this, then you actually have to come up before you go back. And if the front knee is too far back, then when you bend your back leg, you just go down instead of going back. Leg placement is very, very important. With respect to your knee placement, you only have a couple of inches either way, maybe an inch and a half, before you start impacting your ability to recover properly. Another thing that could go wrong, of course, in the lunge position, is you can end up having rolled your back foot. This makes a correct recovery really, really difficult because your foot is your anchor. Some fencers end up lunging like this with their back foot. Now, this is actually a little dangerous because in order to recover correctly, you have to get the foot flat again. And in that roll, you can have an injury. This is not a very good thing to do. Your foot is your anchor. You shouldn't be applying or, or creating an anchor during the recovery. But let's assume that you have a correct lunge position to begin with. What can go wrong? Well, to begin with, coordinating the front and back legs can be a bit of a problem, especially for beginners. So it takes a bit of time and effort to develop that. So if the front leg moves before the back leg does its thing, then you actually end up going up and then down again. If the back leg moves too soon, then you kind of drop and sneak back instead of getting a nice smooth motion like you should. Additionally, it's a real problem if you push off with the ball of your foot instead of your heel. This gets you some initial propulsion, but it doesn't put you in a position so you can push off with your heel to get back effectively. You just don't have enough time to switch your point of push from the ball of your foot to your heel. Remember that fencers move as though their front ankles were pretty much locked. It should always look like this. The knee should always move with the foot. 
But actually, the worst thing that can happen has nothing to do with your legs. It has to do with throwing your, your upper body back in order to get yourself into a on guard position again. Sort of like this. So you're down here, and instead of this correct motion, you end up doing something like this in order to get yourself back. This kind of action, or any variation of it, brings you up and then back, instead of back and then up. It's the exact opposite of what you want. And it has two fatal flaws. First, you're probably recovering to avoid your opponent's repose. So you want your target to move back as much as possible. If you're throwing your body up instead, for the first couple of microseconds, not only are you no, no further away, but you're actually showing more target, making it easier to get hit. But secondly, and probably even more important, you're adding an awful lot of tension to your upper body when you do this. And this is the wrong time to have upper body tension. You have to be thinking about your opponent's blade action, making decisions, doing blade actions, all while your legs are doing this recovery action to get you out of harm's way. One of my favorite exercises to practice all of this trains a number of things all at once. It works on the landing of the lunge, including the front leg motion, the drive of the back leg, and the initiation of the recovery, the change from forward to back. I call these partials because we go into a partial recovery position. The exercise goes like this. You lunge to a partial recovery, both heels stay put, and then from that position, you lunge again, partial recovery, lunge again, and then full recovery to get back. It goes something like this. Lunge, partial, lunge, partial, lunge, full recovery. Now an old man like me can only get down so far and forward so far. You should be trying for much further and much lower. One more observation on the recovery. Even if you have a wonderful lunge, you're not going to use it in competition unless you also have a great recovery. Your mind will simply not allow you to put yourself into that kind of a vulnerable position if you can't extract yourself and unless you have faith in the fact that you can recover well. It's probably just as important to work on a great recovery as it is to work on great lunch. Well, that's all for now. And until next time, good fencing. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something from Rudy's explanation of biomechanics. If you have, there are two links below I invite you to check out. One is a link to his book, Magnum Libre de Escrim. And the second, if you really enjoyed this, we would love to have you help support us continue having educational videos like this through our Patreon page. For as little as $2 a month, you can help support us keep giving you these wonderful fencing videos. Until next time, catch you later.